Hey guys, what's up? This is Puck. Welcome back to Creative Talks. Today, I want to be talking about something a little different, meaning I'll be talking about a different book. This one is called Mind Your Business. So this book is super cool. I picked it up at Barnes & Noble one day. I was getting a cup of coffee. I grabbed the book and I sat down and I wanted to get something where I could just like skim through the book and get fulfilled and get some notes and you know I usually just go sit down at a coffee shop or at Barnes and Noble and just pick up a book and I just write notes you know I read it I study it and I write some notes in it but this book was captivating enough and like it was like so cool that I just wanted to get it I wanted to take it back home uh and do it you know so in the beginning we basically open it up and the first chapter uh it's titled why do I want to start a business well this basically you can translate it into whatever uh, stage in your life or whatever season creatively you're in. Uh, so I'm not trying to start my own business, but you know, this is basically, I can translate it um, as far as my terms. Why do I want to continue building on my creative passion? You know, this creative passion for me is going to be freelance, you know, YouTube, uh, Instagram, IGTV, anything that is basically modeling after a business, but without having a business intention. So to dive into the book and the chapter, as I said, the first chapter is titled, Why Do I Want To? I want to call it, Why Do I Want To? Capitalize on my creative passion. And it basically gives you this blank page, uh, which is blank lines. And you're supposed to draw or write statements as of why you want to continue uh, capitalizing or just focusing on your creative passion or your career or anything else that it is that you are doing at this point uh, that you're going to consider taking these steps. So the instructions go like this. Here's your chance to define your why. List the reasons you want to start your own business or just focus on your passion. Uh, if passion is not one of your reasons, this book might not be for you. You know, so basically this entire book is about capitalizing on your passion, like focusing and just going all in, you know, diving full on on your passion and your craft. So it gives you these lines and it basically it gives you two examples. The two examples is basically so you can understand the the exercise and you know what you're kind of writing or what they're looking for you to write. So the first uh, sample they do obviously is to do what I love. Yeah, I think that's the biggest why as of why anyone is starting a business or anyone is jumping on freelance or anyone is just creating a channel or starting a much more focused Instagram page, you know, or building a website is because you want to do what you love. The second example they gave was to work for myself, you know? And that's, those two are the biggest reasons why anyone would at any point, you know, just sacrifice their time and money to do anything, you know, basically, you know, because you want to do what you love and you want to work for yourself. Those are the biggest whys. So then the book goes to give you like 15 more lines um, and I just wanted to fill them up. And I want to share with you this process uh, as I complete this book, you know, because I'm going to be growing and then maybe in my process of thinking, uh, I'm going to be internalizing and just analyzing all these things that I'm writing and all these questions that it's asking. And I just want to share them with you. So here you go. This is my line. The first line that I wrote is to have freedom to be myself. You know, basically, um, when someone is exploring your passion or exploring your craft, it's because you want to be yourself. You know, when you're working for a business and when you're doing even freelance, you know, you're working for a client and, and anything else that you do, even if you work at, at a taco shop or if you work at a clothing store, you know, you're working for a client. Uh, you're not supposed to fold the clothes the way you want it. You're supposed to fold them a certain way. You're supposed to look like the brand. You're supposed to match the brand. You're supposed to sell the brand. You're supposed to you know, target the client, target the audience, target the CEO. You're targeting someone at all points, you know. So when you want to um, just go all in on your craft and on your passion, it's because I just want to be myself. You know, maybe I like doing videos a certain way. Maybe I like my edits a certain way that is just none. You know, it doesn't match anything else that people are doing, you know. And I've heard so many statements throughout the years that go basically against that, you know. Oh, you're not a commercial photographer. Oh, that's not going to sell. Oh, you're supposed to go on weddings because that's where the money is at. Oh, this is not what you're supposed to do. This is not how you're supposed to do videos. You know, and yes, like there's so many artists and commercial brands and commercial artists that paint the real and the reality of how the business is. 
you know, this is the guidelines. Yes, you're supposed to follow a certain model if you want to make money, you know, if you want to create a business that's commercial. But what are we talking about today? It's if you want to just grow on your passions and grow on your creativity, you know, like I'm all about that. Uh, and this is what the channel is for, you know, just working on your creativity. You know, if you want to start a business, um, I'm pretty sure there's so many other books and so many more uh, tutorials on the steps on how to be commercial, how to take commercial photography. And that already exists. You know, I consume that. I learn from that. But also, I always want to explore, especially on my channel. I want to explore what is going to allow me to be me. Second line, it revolves around the same lines, to be creative. You know, when you want to be yourself, you just want to create something that comes out naturally. You know, just like a kid, you give them some paint and they just paint naturally. They just, you know, it's in my knees, Lux. <laughs> Draw. Oh, man. She draws like a big triangle with like some legs and skinny like fingers and it's like, oh, daddy, you know, like Papa, how do you call him Papa? Um, yeah, just be yourself, you know, be yourself. To be creative though is to get the same colors and just do something random, you know, just do something out of the box. You know, that's what you want to do. You want to be creative when you're working on your craft, you get to be creative, you know, you get to change the thumbnails on your channel as many times as you want. You get to archive those posts and then put a different ones and you get to try different filters or different edits or you get to try a different color scheme. You get to do whatever you want when you get to be creative. So I think that being creative and being yourself, it goes hand to hand, you know, because everyone is creative in some sort of way. So when you have the freedom to be yourself, you do want to be creative. You want to explore as much in the widest range of that creativity. Line three to explore my limits. And the reason why I love this exercise is because it allows you to explore to the root. Like, it's not just like, give me three lines of why you want to do this for yourself. No, it's like, give me 15 reasons. And the first one is to be myself. And for me, like, I was, I was satisfied. You know, like, yes, I want to do this. And I want to explore my craft because I want to be myself. Thumbs up. That's it. That's all the answers you need. But then it asks you again. And I, oh, because I want to be creative. Then it asks you again, and it's like, okay, I want to push my limits, you know? So what's the limits of what I've done? You know, what's the limits of what I can do? Can I record at night? Can I edit in the morning? Can I try these color filters? Can I say this, say that? Can I use this type of music? Can I change my intro? Can I not have an intro? Can I have a little link right here? Can I have a different description? Can I use certain type of clothes? Can I change my background? You know, what's the limit of what I'm trying to do? You know, and this exercise is so, so much important. And every line that I keep reading, I just got to keep emphasizing on how important it is to when you're answering something so personal as of the why of your creative expression, you don't want to just give three answers. You want to give those three answers and then give three answers for every of those answers. And then if you can do it once again, that would be super cool. Let's go on the fourth line to give back to my family. You know, and this one, it just gets very personal. You know, every time someone wants to do something for yourself or for your craft, it's because you want to give back and thank all the people who have been there for you since the beginning. You know, on even the people who have, you've met along the way and on the journey. You know, if anyone ever helped you in a photo shoot, if anyone carried your tripod, or anyone like helped you spot or do a um, reflector or just help you with the lights, carry the microphones, do the pictures while you fix the model, you know, all of those people, you know, all those people matter and you always want to give back, you know, when you're giving, 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 um, to, to grow a channel or to grow an income or to grow in creativity and your position or your influence, you know, always, always remember all the people who have been there for you. And I can tell you, I have a list, a mental list of all the people who have been there, even if they're not in my life anymore, you know, you still respect and you have to honor those relationships because you know even a ladder when you get to the very top you have to honor the first step because when you're at the top and you don't honor the first step then the whole ladder crumbles you know you wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the first person who gave you a ride to that photo shoot or the first person who let you borrow that camera you know all of us didn't start with our equipment or with all the gear that we wanted and i just think it's the worst you know when someone makes it to a certain level and then they feel like, okay, well, I'm good. Let me just hang out with these people. Let me just chill with these photographers. Or let me just, let me change all my followers and just only follow certain people. It's like, come on, 
like what happened to the first steps? What happened to those people who held your ladder at the beginning? We always want to honor. And I think that if I wanted to do this and get anything back, I would always want to give back to the people who have been there for me, the people who have felt me. Let's see, to secure a legacy. To secure a legacy, uh, it could go both ways, you know, and just this exercise as it was focused on building a business and I want to transform it into uh, just following your creative passion. Creating a legacy can go both ways. You know, creating a legacy can go as far as financial. Um, obviously, that one's super easy. You know, you want to create something to give to others, but also to create a legacy and influence and then just designing style. You know, like when I create my channel or my Instagram, you know, I, I try my best not to delete old photos or not to start over. Not because I think, and I'm super proud of the old work, which I am, you know, like we you got to be proud of everything that you do. Uh, even if you get better, you can just archive it or, or save it somewhere else. But you want to create a legacy for your future, you know, for yourself. I'm a huge fan of going back in time and just revising the work, you know, revising, not in a way to not growing, you know, like I know, and, and I always hear interviews from artists who's like, oh, I've never seen my first movie, or I never go and hear the songs from the first album we did. And I get that, I totally get that. And at some points in time, I don't do that as of projects, you know, like I don't go back to an old project and see how I did it because you wanna do things differently and you wanna keep growing. But as far as your portfolio, you know, as far as your legacy, you know, you wanna go back and see where you started, you know, like have that history, you know, and I think it's always the best you wanna watch a documentary and those artists have photos or videos or like the first time they were playing the piano and all of a sudden they got Grammys and they got like all kinds of things, you know, like you wanna you want to have that legacy because I believe it just completes the story, you know? So I'm a huge believer of legacy. I'm a huge believer of keeping in this YouTube channel, the first video that I recorded at a table with my phone. And I was already, you know, I don't even wanna get into that, but I'm a huge believer of having that there because when I see the now, I get to see the growth and people get to learn and understand that, you know, oh, this guy didn't start like this or this artist didn't just start being famous you know there's always a beginning next line to show what i can do show what i can do and having a legacy it's pretty similar i believe but also i think it just comes with a different sense of pride you know it's kind of like being a basketball player and not wanting to show that you can do a three shot or not wanting to show that you can like make a shot from like half the court you know you want to show and it's not to be a show off and it's not to be egocentric and it always comes with your perspective and your attitude you know you gotta be humble about it but also you know um in my personal experience you know I, i've been blessed just being able to explore many different types of art you know drawing doing music for years uh and bands and in church it just making videos, making little short films, or making just commercials, making little promos, writing something, writing book, or writing poetry, you know? Um, and I always wanted to just focus on, okay, which one is the one that I need to focus on? Well, I wasn't made to make one, you know? I wasn't created with just one gift, so I want to show off. You don't want to show off in that cocky way, but you know, you want to have your portfolio really truly represent what you can do you know there's such thing as all of the above you know if you have multiple talents multiple skills um go all in on all those you know go all in and explore that i'm not saying um you always have to craft them or all of them are going to be at the same height and level of success but you do want to explore you know you do want to show what you can do number seven to learn from failure you know learning from failure again you know it's a second step from building a legacy because part of your legacy is the failures all the projects that didn't work all those relationships that are gone you know all the things that you don't have anymore and all the things that you just truly want to delete you know on your instagram or your youtube or your website or anything that you just done with you know that was a failure project i'm done moving on walking away awesome but we never want to forget these things um, not in a very, you know, um, judging kind of way, but, you know, we don't want to forget what didn't work. So there's this quote by Thomas Alva Edison when he created the light bulb, and it says like this, 
I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. You know, and that's always been, you know, in the tip of my head because, you know, as soon as I was talking about failure, this came to mind, you know, like all of these projects that didn't work, it's not because you failed, you know, you're still working, you're still doing projects. You just found all the kinds of ways, uh, some of us more ways than others, of how we should not do certain things. Number eight, to have self-worth in my work. You know, self-worth in my work goes, um, it's kind of like the opposite side of the coin of building a legacy, you know, or showing off what you can do. You know, this is doing all of these things and building on this passion because you want to grow some love for what you do. You know, and I mean this because I've talked to so many people who take like a beautiful photo from their phone, but they say, oh, it's just I got lucky or no, I'm not a photographer. You know, it was from my phone. But, you know, there's so many other people who actually are super proud of that and be like, I, I've seen photographers on Instagram that it says 100% uh, shot with iPhone something, you know, and some of the people are taking beautiful photos on their phones and they don't consider them professional or they don't consider them um, valuable because it was not, they don't consider themselves being valuable in that way, you know. Um, some people who play an instrument, but they're not in a band or they're not doing anything with it. They just say like, oh, no, I just do this for fun. Uh, I've know, I know someone right now who's a very great singer, very great musician. And they're just like, no, I don't want to post until I'm ready. And I'm like, dude, if I could sing or do that, I would. I would be posting about it. And it just, it's not to show off, but it's because you want to build worth uh, in yourself. You want to love what you do at whatever stage that it is it could be a very beginner stage of this craft but if it's a passion you know you want to emphasize in it and you want to be proud and you want to bring value to it because it's going to be bring more value to yourself and the last one i totally forgot i wrote this to dream bigger dreams you know i learned this from my boss and pastor uh at one point he said you know at this point in life i've already accomplished all of my dreams so now I have to dream bigger dreams. This one, it's so important to me and it's such a great lesson that I've learned, you know, because at one point in your life, you have a dream. At such point in your life, you accomplish certain dreams and what's next? You got to dream something bigger. You know, if you thought such thing was so far out and so crazy and extravagant that it was just a dream a couple years ago, now you have it then what's next? You know, what's next? Well, building a bigger dream. Um, I think that's so cool. Um, I wrote this a couple months ago, so I naturally remember that I just finished with that line, but it's important, you know, and it's revitalizing. And this is kind of like a fresh, a very, very, very fresh example of what I talk about legacy, because when I bought this book a couple months ago, I started filling it up and I wanted to make videos, but I wanted to be far along in the process so I can really more understand what this book was about or what I was really going for. But just going back to a list that I just created a couple months ago and seeing, oh wow, like this is what I was thinking back then, like three, four months ago. Let me just refresh on that or what parts of this have I already accomplished, you know, in this little time or what are the things I still need to accomplish, I gotta refocus on. So, you know, you always wanna do that, you know, just if you wanna rewind this video and kind of just copy this, so you don't have to buy the book. Cool. If you want to buy the book, awesome. It's once again, it's called Mind Your Business by Ilana Griffo. I'll just leave the information in the description, you know. So this is the lines that I wrote and we're going to be sharing about them, uh, talking about them. So leave some comments, uh, the Emmy on Instagram or ask me some questions as of why I write that or why was I thinking that or anything that catches your attention, anything that uh, matches kind of like your views or your whys or just any questions in general, you know, just try to connect. Uh, you know, I'm open for answering anything, you know, I'm always posting questions on Instagram as well. And that's the biggest platform where I can uh, interact with you um, and just check it out. You know, check it out. I really recommend making a list of why you want to build on your passion, why you want to expand on your creativity or your craft or even why you want to start a business. Well, that's it for today. It is a creative talk. Thank you guys for stopping by. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys next time.